Hope you're doing good. Today I'll talk about where you can ensure quality in the software development process. The software development process goes through multiple stages and many of them have an opportunity to add quality or to ensure quality. Let me show you what I mean. These are all the steps if you go from left to right all the way from coding to review to launch. Right? Each box represents one step in the process. Of course, a particular startup may eliminate some steps, that's okay, but this is like more general process. And whichever process is amenable to enforcing quality at is shown in green. So let's walk through them. First is coding guidelines. As it says, document them in writing and share them with the team. So this is the first. It's green because this step increases quality. Then is actual task. The biggest box of all of them is actual coding. As part of coding, however, engineers are told to reduce tech debt. When engineers encounter tech debt when trying to do a task, they should stop the task and fix the tech debt. Not go fix all the code, but whatever tech debt they encountered in the process of doing their task needs to be fixed. It won't be fixed if it's a separate task, say one day we'll fix tech debt. That doesn't work. It needs to be made part of the routine process of the team. And then there's a code review which catches bugs and design problems and spreads knowledge, reducing the bus factor, which is the number of people who have to leave a, leave a team for the team to be in trouble. But typically the items, the problems identified are not catastrophic. So it is async, which means it doesn't block deployment. The code can go to production. In parallel, review happens. Try to come up with such non-blocking or asynchronous processes as much as possible. When you have any kind of process that blocks people, saying, okay, now you have to wait for someone to approve, that has a high cost in productivity, in morale, and in smart people leaving the company, and so on. So anyway, while coding, tech debt is reduced. The coding is in white background. It doesn't have a green background because it by itself doesn't reduce, doesn't increase quality but this increases quality. And then the engineer does a self review of his code. He looks at the diffs with fresh eyes, pretending it's someone's code and looks at it for problems specifically, not uh, from the builder's point of view, but uh, because you know, when we are building something, we are in a certain mindset. What is the logic? How does data flow? All that. Now you need to switch gears and look at it with a different mindset, which is, where will this break? How can I make this break? And then you have small commits integrated continuously into master. This is continuous integration. Continuous integration is not a tool, it's a philosophy. It says you have, you don't have long lived branches as much as possible. So as much as possible, you start building from master, make a small commit and merge it back into master. And then you have automated tests, end-to-end -end and unit tests. So what you can probably do is set up the pipeline and write one test to ensure it's working and ask your engineers to write automated tests when they feel it will help, not for every class. Some companies are rigid about it. They write a lot of unnecessary tests that never trigger that never really add value. And I've been asked to write some tests earlier at Google. The purpose of the tests were to satisfy the reviewer, not improve the quality. So don't do that. I'm not saying all tests are of that category, but quite a lot were. So which is why leave it to engineer's judgment. After you have automated tests, sorry, you have automated code analysis tools like Deep Source or Sonar Cube. Then you have canarying. 
where you deploy to say 1% of production traffic. So the idea is this will catch problems without affecting all users. So that's why it increases quality. And then you have full continuous deployment. So these are all the steps in the development process and all the places where you can increase quality. And you can adapt this however you want. For example, suppose you feel that having any kind of code review, even an asynchronous one is not justifiable at this stage. Great, remove this box. If you are not into testing, remove this box. So this is a general process, right? It gives you a bird eye view, bird's eye view, so that you can think about which of these are higher ROI than the others. Remove the ones that have low ROI in your opinion and keep the ones that have high ROI. That way you will have high quality with minimum overhead. If you'd like me to improve your team's quality or your product's quality, there's a link in the description to my consulting website. Thank you.